Today I'm going to be showing you that in many cases entropy prefers order as opposed to chaos. In a previous video I showed you that if you take a jar of dice and spin it and then stop it, the dice will naturally jostle around and actually pack together in a very ordered way. And if you take a box of nails and shake it, they'll naturally align themselves. I argued that when the dice and nails align like this, entropy has actually increased, not decreased. And so surprisingly, entropy is the driving force that makes this order out of chaos. But a lot of people had a problem with this. They said, of course the dice and nails are going to align like this. When the dice start out, they're disordered and stacked higher in the jar. But if you shake it around, they can fall down and pack together better. So them stacking together nicely is actually due to the gravitational potential energy decreasing rather than the entropy. The same thing with the nails, they said. They start out with the average mass higher in the container because they can't fit in the disordered state. But if you shake them around, then they'll fall down in the box. And so you're basically forcing them to align. Again, they said nothing to do with entropy, just gravity doing its thing. But who's right? Is this due to gravity or entropy? And how could we prove it? Well, it's simple. We just need to take away gravity and do the same experiments. So I'm going to be going into orbit to run this experiment. Just kidding. That would be awesome, but a rocket launch and astronaut training would put this video a little over budget. So what else could we do? Well, a few videos ago, I made a video showing how neutral buoyancy can help protect an egg from cracking from high drops. But then it hit me. All I need to do is make my nails and dice neutrally buoyant. Then there's no force of gravity pulling them down. So first, let's do the nail experiment. I need to choose my material for the nails and the liquid. Obviously, the first choice for the liquid is water. So if we're using water, we want to use a material for the nails that's already near the density of water. Water is about one gram per centimeter cubed in density. And there's a common plastic that we're all familiar with called ABS. This is what Legos are made of. ABS is just above that at about 1.1 gram per centimeter cubed. So I have some ABS plastic rods here, and I'm just gonna put them in the water and then add some salt to the water to make them more dense until it exactly equals the ABS density. This is just trial and error until the ABS floats easily in the center of the liquid. But one problem with putting these rods in a liquid like this is that if they get near the surface, the surface tension of the water will pull the rods together and it'll also make them float on the surface. So we can get rid of this effect by mixing a surfactant in that lowers the surface tension of the water. So I'll just use some dish soap here. Now I put this in the salt water so the rods won't be attracted to each other at the surface and they can't sit on the surface of the water. Now I just need to shake them in the liquid and we'll see if this makes them align. But in order to make this even more fair, I'm not going to have a square container since the edges of the container can push the rods to align simply from them hitting the parallel sides. So I'll use a round container here. So now let's see if they align. So I have my salt water around here and then my neutrally buoyant ABS rods in here. So they're free to float on top and around each other. So they're pretty random right now, but let's see what happens when I shake the container. So you can see they've started to group together. Look how you have groups where they're all aligned in the same direction here. So just by creating these random jigglings, the rods all start to align together. And the more I move it, the more they align. So no matter what size of container we use, we find that when the rods can be given enough energy to bump into each other, jiggle around enough to bump into each other, they always form pockets where they align together. So we've taken out any effects of gravity. There's no reason for them to align due to falling in a gravitational potential anymore. So why are they still aligning like this? In some ways, it seems kind of obvious since we're watching them bump into each other and they just bump in a way to make them align together. But what they're doing is maximizing their contact area. This creates more microstates that they could be in. So there's more entropy when they align on their long sides than when they're randomly oriented. The driving force is literally the increase in entropy. There are more ways to be aligned like this than in a random orientation. But does this work for the dice too? Well, let's see. But before we do that, in my line of work, I go through a lot of dishes. 
So I need a good dishwasher. So good that I don't even need to rinse the dishes before I put them in the dishwasher. Thanks to KitchenAid for sponsoring this video and sending me their KitchenAid 360 degree Max Jets third rack dishwasher. With the 360 degree Max Jets third rack, every dish in the top rack gets hit by powerful jets cleaning glasses, mugs, and cereal bowls thoroughly inside and out. In addition, there are over 50 total wash jets spread across five arms. So the dishes get clean even without rinsing. The other thing I love about this dishwasher is it's so quiet. Its decibel rating is only 44 decibels, about as quiet as being in a library. So that means you can wash dishes whenever you need, night or day. This dishwasher also has true self-cleaning filtration, which virtually eliminates the need for manual filter cleaning, something that can be really gross. Oh, oh gross. It continuously captures food particles so only clean water circulates through the wash jets, then cleans itself as the dishwasher drains, meaning you can load without pre-rinsing. And if you're in a hurry, you can use the express wash cycle, which thoroughly cleans your dishes in about 65 minutes. So this means you may never have to wash a dish by hand again. If you wanna check out the KitchenAid 360 degree Max Jets third rack dishwasher, you can click the link in the description. And now let's get back to our experiment. For the dice, I can't just use salt water since they're made of acrylic. I can't dissolve enough salt in the water to get it dense enough, but I can dissolve a lot of sugar. So I do the same thing here and just keep adding a lot of sugar until the dice just drift around in the liquid. I don't want them to sink fast or float to the top too fast. Okay, it looks like we got it. So here's my jar of neutrally buoyant dice. So they don't want to sink to the bottom or float to the top. Okay, now watch what happens when I jiggle the jar now. You can see that the faces of the dice begin to align. The reason this is happening is that when they're randomly oriented, they have very little translational entropy. But when they're packed together, this opens up more free volume that the dice can be in. So they have more translational states to be in. And when there are more states to be in, then that means the entropy has increased. Their orientational entropy has decreased, but the increase in translational entropy offsets it. So you can see the faces all started aligning. This opens up areas where there's a large volume where there aren't dice anymore. So there's a general principle here that when you have a group of non-interacting solids, meaning solids that don't stick together or repel each other, and they have the same shape, they'll naturally have a tendency to maximize face-to-face -face alignment. This is a crazy realization. What you find is that due to entropy alone, crystal structures tend to form naturally. In fact, in virtually all phase transitions that involve liquids, vapors, or crystals, those phase transitions can be reproduced using entropy alone. I'm gonna put a great review paper on this phenomenon in the description since for a lot of people, this might be your first time hearing about entropy in this way. So in my first experiments, gravity was influencing the outcome and helping the alignment occur. We can write out how energy and entropy work together to see if something will happen naturally using something that we call Helmholtz free energy. To know if something will spontaneously happen, we can just check if the Helmholtz free energy is negative. If it's negative, it will happen spontaneously. If it's positive, it won't. So in our case, let's say that we want to know if at a certain condition, like a bunch of vibrating rods, if they'll spontaneously align. Well, we know that the entropy always increases, so this will be positive here. But the U here represents the internal energy of the system. So in the case where we had gravity, the internal energy is going to decrease. So this could have been enough to make the free energy negative even without the entropy increasing. But in this experiment with the neutrally buoyant liquid, then the potential energy change is zero. So now we know that the free energy is negative and this means that the entropy is the pure driving force behind making the rods and the dice align. So entropy can act as the guiding force that can actually lead to things being more ordered and less chaotic. This is because there's no good definition of order anyways. We just like things aligning as humans, so we call it order. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab and we'll see you next time.